Did you know that since public funded vaccine programs started in Canada, the annual cases, hospitalizations, and deaths of chickenpox have been reduced by over 90%? In today's video, we'll be talking about chickenpox and the importance of vaccination. The first part of the video will be targeted for adults, but you can skip to 5 minutes and 8 seconds for a kid friendly explanation of chickenpox. We hope you enjoy! Chickenpox is a highly contagious disease caused by a virus called varicella zoster. The virus spreads mainly through close contact with someone who has chickenpox. At first, chickenpox may start out like a cold. Your child might have a runny or stuffy nose, sneezing, and a cough. One to two days later, a rash may appear in bunches of spots on your child's chest, back, and face. From there, it can spread quickly over the surface area of their body. Other symptoms that may appear before the rash are fever, tiredness, loss of appetite, and headache. The chickenpox blisters are small and sit on an area of red skin that can be anywhere from the size of a dime to a quarter. At first, the rash looks like a pink dot, but it can rapidly develop into a small blister. After about one to two days, the fluid in the blisters gets cloudy and eventually it turns into a scab. The diagnosis of chickenpox is typically made after a visual observation by a doctor. A combination of the visible rash as well as a patient history of exposure should be enough. If further testing is needed, there are a variety of laboratory tests that can be done. Blood tests will check for antibodies against the virus, and tests using specimen samples will test for the virus itself. Of the different diagnostic tests, PCR, or polymerase chain reaction, is the fastest and most sensitive test that can be done to confirm a diagnosis. It uses a sample of fluid from the blisters to test for varicella zoster DNA. So you might be wondering, if chickenpox is so contagious, how can you protect yourself? If you or someone you know has chickenpox, make sure to stop all physical contact until all blisters have popped and are crusted over. If your child has chickenpox, you should inform their school of a possible chickenpox exposure. You can expect them to miss five to six days of school until they are no longer contagious and can safely return to normal activities. Vaccines are currently the best preventative measure available for you and your family. It is recommended that each person receives two doses of the chickenpox vaccine at different time periods depending on your age. There are different versions of the chickenpox vaccines. The two most common are the varicella vaccine and MMRV vaccine, a vaccine that contains protection against measles, mumps, rubella, and varicella. In order for the vaccine to work, it must contain the live version of the virus. But one may ask, if the vaccine contains the same thing that causes chickenpox, won't I become infected? Well, yes and no. The purpose of the vaccine is to teach your body how to recognize the virus. The key thing to understand is that the live version of the virus has been weakened. This means that it will have enough of an effect to create antibodies, but the effect won't be strong enough to make you sick. Once vaccinated, if the real virus enters your body, your immune system will be able to fight it off quickly with the antibodies it has already made. However, nothing is 100%. It is estimated that 20% of vaccinated individuals will still be infected with the virus if exposed, but will have a much milder reaction, meaning less lesions, reduced fever, and reduced risk of complications. But chickenpox is not just a kid disease, and as a parent, you need to protect yourself and those around you. If you have never been vaccinated for chickenpox or have never been diagnosed, you are still at risk for contracting the disease. What's worse is that as an adult, you are 25 times more likely to have complications. Now there are certain things you can do at home if you or your child have chickenpox. To help soothe the need to scratch, you can use calamine lotion and take a cool bath with baking soda and oatmeal. But you should immediately consult a doctor if your child is younger than 1 or older than 12, and if they haven't been vaccinated, have a weakened immune system, develop a severe cough or fever for more than four days, or have a fever higher than 104 degrees Fahrenheit. For more information, you can visit the link in the description. And in cases such as these, a physician may prescribe some antiviral medications. When treating fevers for chickenpox in children, avoid using aspirin or aspirin-containing medication because it may put the child at risk for developing Rye's disease, which can affect the brain and liver and can lead to death. Some other complications that can arise from chickenpox are bacterial infections of the skin and soft tissues in children, pneumonia, infection or swelling of the brain, bleeding problems, bloodstream infections, and dehydration. 
If you have questions or concerns, please call your doctor. This video is for educational purposes only and is not meant to substitute professional help. Hearing how to explain the chicken box to your kids? Our friends Jimmy and Jamie would be happy to help with this week's episode of Connect the Dots on Chicken Box. Hey Jimmy, where have you been? Hi Jamie! Oh man, I wish I could have been here last week, but I had to stay home because of the chicken pox. The chicken's box? Do you have a pet chicken? Does it, does it lay eggs? No, no, the chicken pox. It's a type of infection that you can get when a germ gets inside your body and makes you sick. I got it from my sister, who got it from her teammate because it spreads quickly from person to person. Does that mean I'm gonna get sick? No, that's why I've been away from school. I was getting better. The doctor says I'm okay now. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. But how come you were away for so long? It felt like forever. It was only a week. Well, you see, first I had to go see the doctor so they could tell it was the chicken box. The doctor asked me a lot of questions about how I was feeling and the people I was around. I wasn't feeling too great, and I had all these itchy spots on my back. Based on this, the doctor told my parents that I have chicken pox. Okay, well, couldn't the doctor give you some medicine to make it go away so you could come back to school? Well, they did, but that's not enough to make it go away right away. You see, next came the worst part of the chicken pox. I just kept getting more and more of these itchy spots, and I had to stop myself from scratching them because if I kept scratching, I could make it worse. My mom even cut my nails so short so I would stop scratching and she put a lot of lotion on to try and make me feel better. And I had to stay home all this time because I didn't want to make anybody else sick. You didn't leave your house at all? Nope. Thankfully it didn't last too long and I didn't get very sick. And that's because the doctor gave me some medicine to fight against the chicken pox when I was a baby. It's called a vaccine. It's a medicine that comes in a needle and helps our body fight the bad guy. It also teaches our bodies to remember them. Whoa, that's cool. So basically our bodies memorize how to attack and win? Yeah! Cool. Well, since you're back, are you up for a soccer match? You're on! We hope you learned something about chicken pox. See how much you learned by trying to connect these dots on the chicken pox. Great job! We'll see you next time!